It was nearly 14 years ago when the very first video ever uploaded to YouTube was published in April 2005, just two months before I graduated high school. In November of 2005, I discovered YouTube and with my best friend, I became one of the first popular YouTubers at just 18 years old. I grew up with YouTube woven into Shut my adult up. DNA. My name's Anthony Padilla, and today I'm gonna sit down with a few of today's famous teenage YouTubers who were just toddlers when YouTube was first created to see how their success on the platform has affected their day-to-day -day lives. How has YouTube shifted their perception of the world in comparison to how it affected me when I was just a teenager on this website nearly 14 years ago? Has their following on YouTube been a blessing or a curse? Hey, Big Nick! What's going on, man? Why would you do something like that? What? What's the matter with you? Yo, Tanner. Hi. Off in the race car slow-mo. Bryce. Hey, man. Dude. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming out and teach me about the uh, the wondrous world of being a teenage YouTuber in 2019. Yeah, it's something. <laughs> Should be in college, but I'm out here making videos. <laughs> How do you refer to yourself? Is it a content creator, teenage YouTuber? Um, I or... would tell people I'm a YouTuber, yeah. Content creator. Content creator. I'm turning 20 this year. I'm not gonna be a teenager anymore. <laughs> I refer to myself as a iconic figure of this generation. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How would you describe what it is that you do on YouTube? I think everyone always has questions. They're kind of like, yeah. well, what does that mean? And you're like, oh, I make videos about family, travel, action sports. Mm -hmm. I kind of just film my life. I make videos about my life in LA. But specifically LA, that's a big part of it. I act the same in every state. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get a cup. Oh my You know, I make vlogs on YouTube. I'm also in a lot of popular people's videos. And then I make my own music content as well. How old are you and how long have you been uploading to YouTube? I've been making YouTube videos since I was nine and I'm 19 now. That's more than half your life. Yeah, <laughs> making videos. So you got to see the evolution of your voice changing. You, seriously, <laughs> no, you should put a clip. I didn't know that, but apparently that's him. It was insane. I'm 19 years old right now and I've been uploading since I was 16. It started being consistent around like when I was 18. So you've only been really consistently considering yourself a YouTuber for a year? For a year? Yeah, I'm a fresh YouTuber. I'm a noob. I started making videos like back when I was 13. Yeah. But I didn't like blow up till I was like 17, so like three years ago. How much time do you spend working on your YouTube content? Every day I'm editing or right. filming, Every day, bro. But I only post two times a week. I don't have other time to like focus on anything else. It's actually right. bad. Really? But, so yeah. so how much time a week do you think you're spending? 80 hours. You spend 80 hours a week doing 90. YouTube content? 90 hours? Just thinking about YouTube, like on YouTube. As a teenager who's reaching thousands, if not millions of viewers with every single video you upload, do you feel a sense of responsibility to be a good role model? I never, I even say this in my videos, I'm not a role model. So you're like, don't try this at home kids, but do watch this Do at watch home it a lot. Let it influence you a little bit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What's it like balancing teenage day-to-day -day struggles and your YouTube career. I don't party, like I don't yeah. drink. I haven't had a girlfriend in like nine months. I'm in such my own bubble, like focus yeah. on what I'm doing that like I don't even care about those things. Yeah, I mean, I grew up with like a lot of struggles as a kid. Like I went blind in my left eye when I was nine. Like when I was born, I had to get like a C1, C2 fusion in my neck and I had oh to wear like God. a cone for like four years. So like, yeah. you know, a lot of my childhood was like kind of taken away from me at a young age. Like I went through a lot, but I always like used comedy to like cope with it. So I think like when I finally found a way to use my comedy as like a platform, I was just like, yo, like f everything else. I'm just gonna do this, ride the wave. Like this is what I was meant to do, you know? Yeah. I was meant to be an entertainer. What do people at your school think of your videos? So I used to get made fun of by all the kids for scootering. Yeah. And then um, I got kicked out of this school. You got kicked to... out, sorry. Yeah, I got kicked out of a Catholic school just for being like a class clown and acting out. And uh -huh. I actually filmed a video in the classroom and put on YouTube. And that was uh -huh. the reason I got kicked out. So YouTube got you kicked out of your school? Yeah. I used to get beat up all the time. You get beat up? Yeah, when I was in high school, I started what? making videos. Why? I don't know. I guess kids just don't like seeing other people succeed. What, what would they say to you? What would they do? Well, they used to call me <laughs> gay, like just stuff like that. Yeah. Like, I used to feel sad. Yeah. It's like, why doesn't anyone like me? Yeah. And my mom used to like just be so sad because I would come home just torn down by high school. But um, look at me now. Ah. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You hear a lot of kids starting to do good and then everyone starts hating on them but like people around school liked me already like because I would do rap battles at football games. <laughs> 
Do your parents ever punish you for your online behavior? Like when I was 15, I made like this, you know how like the grind on me challenge was popular? Oh yeah. I did like a funny like spin off to that and like yeah. was in my high school and like was like humping my high school bench. Like <laughs> your high school bench? My high, I was just like, Humping it. I was like 15. <laughs> and like, it was like a funny joke, right? Because I'm just like a little kid humping a bench, you know? But dude, like, that shit went viral and my parents got so mad. What'd they do to you? They made me delete it, bro. <laughs> How old were you when you first passed 1 million subscribers? Um, I was 16. I turned 18. It was like when I was 20 this year. What was your reaction like to that? Sweet, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't be content with that like, milestone? No, I, like it was cool, but I'm like, okay, so what do I gotta do next, you know? Like, well, was... I mean, that's kind of the problem with creating so much content is you're always looking forward. You're never, yeah. you're never really you're enjoying never really the moment. Satisfied. And when like a video does bad, your whole day is f I would have videos that would get like 500k a million and then I had a video that got like 100k and I was so depressed. I would just literally sit on the floor and like look at the ceiling. Like, would you be on the uh, YouTube studio app refreshing yeah, the views? Yeah bro, checking the real time. This you is could, the high You could refresh right here as a YouTuber. Yeah. This is like too much power. YouTube's like, oh it's great. And then I'm like, yo that, that bar better be going up or yeah. else I'm gonna feel like because I must have done something poor. Literally, when the bar goes down, you get so like mad. Yeah. And then you get sad. You you feel like you did something bad, that yeah. you're not a good creator, you're not an artist, you're just yeah. a piece of If yeah. you care about numbers and you let numbers affect you, like yeah. it drove me crazy. YouTube user Purple Worm wants to know if you have any tips on how to be famous. Find your niche and go for it. Make your niche your bitch. Yeah. That. <laughs> Pecan asks what your backup plan is. I don't have a backup plan because I know the plan that I got now is gonna work. Confidence, baby! <laughs> Birthday34 asks, how does it feel to be earning more money than your parents? Honestly, for me, it's not even about that. It's just sharing is caring. If your whole family can eat, it's yeah. a good day. Yeah, my mom was like, she don't, she always makes jokes. She's like, man, I went to college for 10 years for this <laughs> bullshit, <laughs> and you're making more in six months than I do in a whole year? <laughs> I don't. Both my parents are big time doctors. <laughs> Daniel June wants to know who your YouTube role models are. Definitely Smosh. Definitely. <laughs> All jokes aside though, like you and Fred were actually the first oh, people I ever watched on YouTube. That's so funny, like, dude. Seriously. Thank no, you, but, man. Would you sell your company slash channel for zero dollars? Why would I do that? No. No, why would anyone do that? What's the logic of that? You're already smarter than, than than I was at your age. Really? You would have sold yeah. it? I sold Smosh for zero dollars. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Considering I was around your age when I first started YouTube 14 years ago, I made some horrible decisions. Zero dollars. And I've seen my fair share of drama both behind scenes and publicly. Is there anything you'd like to ask me? How do you think being so invested in YouTube at such a young age affected you in your adult years now? I think that when I first started, I, I became obsessed with working and I realized that the more work that I put into my content and videos and whatnot meant more success. And at the time, the more effort I put in, the higher the views were. So I kind of associated more views meant that my effort paid off. Things started to shift with the algorithm and whatnot. Maybe people found other things that they were more interested in. But those numbers started to go all over the place and there was no consistency to that. So I could put in hundreds of hours of work into something and the views would be much lower than I was expecting. And I would start to equate that with my sense of self-worth. You know, your work is really important, but remember that that's not the most important part of your life. You are living your best youthful years of your life right now. Don't let those get passed up because you're so into that finish line, reaching that finish line, reaching that goal. I like that. Yeah. Appreciate that. Has anyone ever tried to exploit your fame? Oh yeah, I think yeah. I think everyone's dealt with that, especially yeah. in this day and age and like yeah. for how much clout means to people. <laughs> Yeah. And, and do you deal with a lot of people trying to, you know, be friends with you because they know that you have success? Yeah. I keep my circle really small. Yeah, of course. Anything. There's so many people that try to social climb. I can just, I can smell from a mile away. You can away. smell it? I can smell How? from a mile away. How? What's the away. sign? What's the sign that it's, someone's trying to do just, that? Someone's too nice or 
if someone's like constantly hitting you up when there's no reason to hang out. What would you say your life's purpose is? I want a family when I'm like 25, 30. Really? And be, you want to settle down quickly then? Yeah, and I want to be like financially just comfortable to be able to not work if I don't want to. Yeah. So I'd rather just grind it out as hard as I can work right now. Yeah. And set myself up for that. Dude, I mean, I mean, I can fully relate. The reason I worked so hard when I first started YouTube is because I wanted to be able to retire. So I went to Hawaii. I I'd, I'd been on a plane for my very first time when I was 17 and I saw this dude chilling on the beach in a little tiny Hawaiian shack on the shoreline. He was just playing his ukulele. And I was like, that looks like the most relaxing life. That's gonna be me. I'm gonna work as hard as I can, get to a point where if I wanted to, I could just retire and sit on the beach all day. And now I could technically do that and I do not want that at all. Yeah, so that's another thing. I've, I've had that conversation with people and they always like, so I don't know, I'm probably gonna get to that point and it'll be, I'll have different yeah. goals. Yeah. But that's like kind of what drives me right now. What do you hope to achieve by, let's say, you know, being 31 years of age? I want to be a multimillionaire. You're driven by money most? Um, no, uh, I just want to help my mom out. When I'm 31, I want to have more success, but I want that success to be a result of like good energy. That way my karma is very like good. How would you tell any teenagers watching this video to subscribe to my channel? I would just look them dead in the windows of their soul and I'd say, if you don't subscribe right now, someone's coming to your house tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and That's I'm not, not even a threat. Who. That's not even a threat. I'm not even gonna tell you who's coming to your house. You have five seconds to shout out anything you want. Go. Follow me on Instagram at Real Big Nick. Follow me on Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Music, Big Nick. Twitter is Big Nick. Yo, Go. shout out to Space Station Gaming, best esports org in the entire world. Shout out to T Fox Brand. Follow me on Instagram at Brazil. What the f did you just say? Follow me on Instagram at Brazil. <laughs> You said five seconds, I was trying to. <laughs> All right, well thank you so yeah. much Tanner. I thank feel like so I, uh, I understand what it's like to be a teenager on YouTube in 2019. Yeah, seriously, it's been awesome to sit down here and talk. After spending the day with these teenage YouTubers, I've come to realize just how much YouTube has changed since I first started as a teenager 14 years ago. The more this community has developed, the more it has become complicated and nuanced. Being born into a world in which YouTube was already established has created a generation of creative, expressive kids with bright futures ahead of them in exchange for an unconventional teenage life filled with even greater risks and rewards. See you later, bye guys. Press a like. Before you go, yo, if you don't smash that like button, I'm gonna be so mad. I'm actually gonna be pissed. If you don't smash that like button, I'm going home, I'm telling my mom how much I hate her, and I'm getting mad at my dad for canceling my Xbox Live. Smash that like button. Do it, he needs to go home and he needs to play Minecraft Violence on Xbox. Violence makes likes go up. Smash that like button <laughs> right now.